Hey guys, welcome back to Thread and Glue Designs. Today we are going to pick up in the book of Hebrews in chapter 9. We will finish this book today, uh, so if you do have a request for the next book we do in the Bible, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And with that, let's just jump into it. Chapter 9. Now the first covenant, in fact, had regulations for worship and its earthly sanctuary. For a tent was prepared, the outer one, which contained the, the lampstand, the table, and the presentation of the loaves. This is called the holy place. And after the second curtain, there was a tent called the holy of holies. It contained the golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant covered entirely with gold. In this Ark were the golden urn containing the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. And just a side note right here, the covenant is talking about is when Moses went up onto the mountain and God gave him the Ten Commandments and the covenant of them doing um, sacrifices for him. And above the ark were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Now is not the time to speak of these things in detail. So with these things prepared like this, the priests entered con enter continually into the outer tent as they performed their duties. But only the high priest enters once a year into the inner tent and not without blood that he offers for himself and for the sins of the people committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit is making clear that the way into the holy place had not yet appeared as long as the old tabernacle was standing. This was a symbol for the time then present when gifts and sacrifices were offered that could not perfect the conscience of the worshiper. So we don't have perfection at this point. It, they do have um, sacrifices to help with their sins, but it's not perfection. They served only a master of food and drink and various ritual washings. They are external regulations imposed until the new order came. The new order that came is talking about Jesus. But now, Christ has come as the high priest of the good things to come. He passed through the greater and more perfect tent not made with hands. That is not of this creation. It's talking about heaven here. And he entered once for all into the most holy place, not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. So, and so he himself secured eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a young cow sprinkled on those who are defiled consecrated them and provided ritual purity, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. And so, he is the mediator of a new covenant. And the new covenant, just a side note, is where Christians no longer have to make these blood sacrifices because Jesus made the one final worthy blood sacrifice that was needed. So that those who are called may receive the eternal inheritance he has promised, since he died to set them free from the violations committed under the first covenant. For where there is a will, the death of the one who made it must be proven. For a will takes effect only at death since it carries no force while the one who made it is alive. So even the first covenant was inaugurated with blood. For when Moses had spoken every command to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself 
and all the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant that God has commanded you to keep. Side note, he is talking about the old covenant. And both the tabernacle and all the utensils of worship he likewise sprinkled with blood. Indeed, according to the law, almost everything was purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So it was necessary for the sketches of the things in heaven to be purified with these sacrifices. But the heavenly things themselves required better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with hands, the representation of the true sanctuary, but into heaven itself, and he appears now in God's presence for us. And he did not enter to offer himself again and again, the way the high priest enters the sanctuary year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But now he has appeared once and for all at the consummation of the ages to put away sin by his sacrifice. And just as people are appointed to die once and then to face judgment, so also after Christ was offered once to bear the sin of many, to those who eagerly await him, he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation. This is what we call the second coming of Christ when he comes back for us. For the law possesses a shadow of the good things to come, but not the reality itself, and is therefore completely unable, by the same sacrifices offered continually year after year, to perfect those who come to worship. For otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered, since the worshippers would have been purified once and for all, and so have no further consciousness of sin? But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sin year after year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. So when he came into the world, he said, we're talking about Jesus here, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Whole burnt offerings and sin offerings you took no delight in. Then I said, Here I am. I have come. It is written of me. In the scroll of the book, To do your will, O God. When he says above, Sacrifices and offerings and whole burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire, nor did you take delight in them, which are offered according to the law, the law being the old covenant. Then he says, here I am, I have come to do your will. He does away with the first to establish the second. Here, when he's talking about doing away with the first, he's talking about the first covenant where the people of Israel had to make regular sacrifices um, and perform all different rituals for their forgiveness of sins or for, for God to stick with them. By his will, we have been made holy through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands day after day, serving and offering the same sacrifices again and again, sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, the priest being Jesus, by the way, he sat down at the right hand of God, where he is now waiting until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are made holy. And the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after saying, This is the covenant that I will establish with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts, and I will inscribe them on their minds. Then he says, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Thank God, right? 
Now where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. It's talking about sacrifices. There's no need to sacrifice anymore. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the fresh and living way that he inaugurated for us, through the curtain that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in the assurance that faith brings, because we have had our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. And let us hold unwaveringly to the hope that we confess for the one who made the promise is trustworthy. And let us take thought of how to spur one, on, one another on to love and good works, not abandoning our own meetings, as some of are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other, and even more so because you see the day drawing near. For if we deliberately keep on sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, no further sacrifice for sin is left for us but only a certain fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume God's enemies. Someone who rejected the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much greater punishment do you think that per that person deserves who has contempt for the Son of God? and profanes the blood of the covenant that made him holy and insults the spirit of grace. For we know the one who says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to, to fall into the hands of the living God. But remember the former days when you endured a harsh conflict of suffering after you were enlightened, at times you were publicly exposed to abuse and afflictions, and at other times you came to share with others, who were treated in the same way. For in fact, you shared the sufferings of those in prison, and you accepted the confiscation of your belongings with joy, because you knew that you certainly had a better and lasting possession. And here it's talking about better and lasting possession, meaning Jesus himself in heaven. So do not throw away your confidence, because it has great reward. For you need endurance in order to do God's will, and so receive what is promised. For just a little longer, and he who is coming will arrive and not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I take no pleasure in him. But we are not among those who shrink back and thus perish, but are among those who have faith and preserve their souls. Chapter 11 Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, being, being convinced of what we do not see. Take note, that is the definition, the true definition of faith. I'll read it one more time. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, being convinced of what we do not see. For by it the people of old received God's commendation. By faith we understand that the worlds were set in order at God's command, so that the visible has its origin in the invisible. By faith... Abel offered God a greater sacrifice than Cain, and through his faith he was commended as righteous, because God commended him for his offerings. And through his faith he still speaks, through he, though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken up so that he did not see death, and he was not to be found because God took him up. For before his removal, he had been commended as having pleased God. Now without faith, it is impossible to please him. For the one who approaches God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him.
By faith, Noah, when he was warned about things not yet seen, with reverent regard constructed an ark for the deliverance of his family. Through faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called out when he was called to go out to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, and he went out without understanding where he was going. Man, can you imagine how, how scary that has to be at times? You have to really have a strong faith in God to be able to do that. By faith, he lived as a foreigner in the promised land as though it were a foreign country, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, who were fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even though Sarah herself was barren and he was too old, he received the ability to procreate because he regarded the one who had given the promise to be trustworthy. So in fact, children were fathered by one man and this one as good as dead like the number of stars in the sky and like the innumerable grains of sand on the seashore. These all died in faith without receiving the things promised, but they saw them in the distance and welcomed them and acknowledged that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For those who speak in such a way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. In fact, if they had been thinking of the land that they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. So here it is talking about the um, Israelites, that they would have in fact had an opportunity to return to be slaves to the Egyptians again. But as it is, they aspire to a better land, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. He had received the promises, yet he was ready to offer up his only son. God had told him, through Isaac, descendants will carry on your name. And he reasoned that God could even raise him from the dead, and in a sense, he received him back from there. By faith, also, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the future. By faith, Jacob, as he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped as he leaned on his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, mentioned the exodus of the sons of Israel and gave instructions about his burial. By faith, when Moses was born, his parents hid him for three months because they saw the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Side note here, the king had actually ordered all children to be executed, all male, firstborn male sons. By faith, when he grew up, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be ill-treated with the people of God than to enjoy sin's fleeting pleasure. He regarded abuse suffered for Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for his eyes were fixed on the reward. By faith, he left Egypt without fearing the king's anger, for he preserved as though he persevered as though he could see the one who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, so that the one who destroyed the firstborn would not touch them. By faith they crossed the Red Sea, if on dry ground, as if on dry ground, but when the Egyptians tried it, they were swallowed up. By faith the wall of Jer walls of Jericho fell after the people marched around them for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute escaped the destruction of the disobe of the disobedient 
because she welcomed the spies in peace. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, the, and the prophets. Through faith they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength in weakness, became mighty in battle put foreign armies to flight, and women received back their dead raised to life. But others were tortured, not accepting release to obtain resurrection to a better life. And others experienced mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawed apart, murdered with the sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskins. They were destitute, afflicted, ill-treated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and caves and openings in the earth. And these all were commended for their faith. Yet they did not receive what was promised, for God had provided something better for us so that they would be made perfect together with us. A side note here, there were 18 times in chapter 11 that were told of examples of the faith. And this is so that we also will have faith and be strengthened in it. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, we must get rid of every weight and the sin that clings so closely and run with endurance the race set out for us keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set out for him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Think of him who endured such opposition against himself by sinners, so that you may not grow weary in your souls and give up. You have not yet resisted to the point of bloodshed in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as sons? My son, do not scorn the Lord's discipline or give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and chastises every son he accepts. Endure your suffering as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you do not experience discipline, something all sons have shared in, then you are illegitimate and are not sons. Besides, we have experienced discipline from our earthly fathers and we respected them. Shall we not submit ourselves all the more to the Father of spirits and receive life? For they disciplined us for a little while, as seemed good to them, but he does so for our benefit, that we may share his holiness. Now as disciples seems now all discipline seems painful at the time, not joyful, but later it produces the fruit of peace and righteousness for those trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your listless hands and your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may be put out of joint but be healed. Pursue peace with everyone, and holiness, for without it no one will see the Lord. Let me read that again to you. Pursue peace with everyone. And holiness, for without it no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no one be like a bitter root springing up and causing trouble, and through it many become defiled. And see to it that no one becomes an immoral or godless person like Esau, who sold his own birthright for a single meal. 
For you know that later, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no opportunity for repentance, although he sought the blessing with tears. For you have not come to something that can be touched, to a burning fire and darkness and gloom and a whirlwind, and the blast of a trumpet and a voice uttering words such that those who heard begged to hear no more. For they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. In fact, the scene was so terrifying that Moses said, I shudder with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to myriads of angels, to the assembly and congregation of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of the righteousness, who have been made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks of something better than Abel's does. Take care not to refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less shall we if we reject the one who warns from heaven? Then his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, I will once more shake not only the earth but heaven too this is talking about the second coming again now this phrase once more indicates the removal of what is shaken that is of created things so that what is unshaken may remain so since we are receiving an unshakable kingdom let us give thanks and through this let us offer worship pleasing to God in devotion and awe, for our God is indeed a devouring fire. 13. Brotherly love must continue. Do not neglect hospitality, because through it some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as though you were in prison with them and those ill-treated as though you too felt their torment. Marriage must be honored among all the marriage bed kept undefiled, and the marriage bed kept undefiled, for God will judge sexually immoral people and adulterers. Your conduct must be free from the love of money, and you must be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you, and I will never abandon you. Isn't that great? So we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. What can people do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke God's message to you. Reflect on the outcome of their lives and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all sorts of strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not ritual meals, which have never benefited those who participated in them. We have an altar that those who serve in the tabernacle have no right to eat from. For the bodies of those animals whose blood the high priests bring into the sanctuary as an offering for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, to sanctify the people by his own blood, Jesus also suffered outside the camp. We must go out to him, then outside the camp, bearing the abuse he experienced. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Side note, that is talking about the new Jerusalem. Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, acknowledging his name. And do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for God is pleased with such sacrifices. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls and will give an account for their work. Let them do this with joy and not with complaints, 
for this would be no advantage for you. Pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to conduct ourselves rightly in every respect. I especially ask you to pray that I may be restored to you very soon. Now may the God of peace, who by the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, our Lord Jesus Christ, equip you with every good thing to do his will, working in us what is pleasing before him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, bear with my message of exhortation, for in fact I have written to you briefly. You should know that our brother Timothy has been released. If he comes soon, he will be with me when I see you. Greetings to all your leaders and all the saints. Those from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with you. And with that, it concludes the book of Hebrews. So definitely leave me a comment below letting me know what book of the Bible you would like to go to next. And I'll be glad to take that into consideration for next Wednesday. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out. And thank you so much. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.